Hey guys, welcome to the video, Salt here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new primary weapon, the AX-52. Now in this weapon series, I take a weapon, I build it out, and I test that weapon on its own merits. Meaning I don't mix it with any kind of external factors that would increase weapon performance. That would be things like Warframes using abilities, pets putting statuses on enemies, things like that. I just test the weapon, built out, by itself, and I let the viewer make their own intelligent conclusions about adding those external things. Okay. So let's get into the AX-52 here. So the model for the AX-52 is that of a AK-47. It's a pretty cool, unique looking model. Even has a little strap for it or a little sling. Okay. Unique traits about the AX-52. Let's just read them here. Hip fired shots have a plus 60% ammo efficiency. That, that's pretty cool. And then aimed headshots have a 100% crit chance. That's very good. And on testing, uh, this 100% crit chance acts like final critical. So it just adds 100% crit to whatever your crit is. So if, if with all of your mod, like with all of your mods, let's say your crit chance got to 110%, this would be turning it into 210%. So this doesn't get affected by like critical chance percentage mods. This is just a hundred crit chance that gets plopped on top of whatever you get your crit chance to. And I tested this by going to the simulacrum. I took off galvanized scope. I took off critical delay and I just had its base of 26 crit chance. Granted, this does have puncture, but its base of 26 and its uh, puncture, even at max, should not be getting it orange crits. And this was easily getting orange crits with just a unique trait here. So that's how I found out it is final crit chance is how this works. All right. Um, other interesting things, not necessarily unique, is that the weapon is going to have above average critical multiplier. So this says 5.3, but the base, if I go on a blank config here, is 2.4. So that's above average. So you get a little bit more crit damage than you would on normal weapons or on other weapons, I should say. All right, so let's take a look at the mods next here. Um, oh, and I, let me go back real quick. So another unique thing is that it only has puncture as a status. Now we're going to add viral to it, but without viral, it will just be puncture, which is okay because that also increases your crit chance. Okay, so now into the mods, we're going to have galvanized chamber for multi-shot. We're going to have galvanized scope for crit chance. We're going to have primed shred for fire rate and punch through. Now, Prime Shred is a login reward, so not everyone is going to have this. And Regular Shred kind of sucks. You either use Prime Shred or you use the other uh, Fire Rate mod, Vile Acceleration. Let me pull up Vile Acceleration. Okay, let me pull Prime Shred down here. So Vile Acceleration is 90 Fire Rate, and Prime Shred is 55 Fire Rate. So Vile Acceleration, you actually get more Fire Rate out of. Um, but Prime Shred gives you 2.2 punch through, and this is a single target weapon, so punch through uh, helps a lot. It increases your, your kill potential by a gigantic amount. So if you have access to Prime Shred, use Prime Shred. But if you don't, don't worry too much about it. Use Vile Acceleration. Uh, regular Shred is just a little bit too weak. I think the fire rate is only a 30% increase, which is, at that point, you might as well just not even use a uh, fire rate mod. So, okay. So we're going to be going for Prime Shred, but remember, you can use that one. Next, we're going to be going for Hunter Munitions. So we have a 30% chance to apply a Slash Proc on a critical. Uh, pretty much all of our shots are going to be critical, so that's going to be a lot of Slash Procs there. Going to go for Critical Delay for Crit Chance. Vital Sense for Crit Damage. And then the last two slots here, we're going to be going for uh, two elements to make Viral. So we're going to have our 6060 Toxin and our 6060 Cold to make Viral. Now, the other thing to consider is using the primed cryo rounds over rhymed rounds. Um, primed cryo rounds is going to let you deal more upfront damage, but it's going to reduce your status chance. Granted, we don't need a giant status chance because viral only stacks to 10 and puncture, I believe, only stacks to 5. So we don't need a huge status chance. Um, but the other thing it's going to do is it's going to super, super weight viral, like uh, even higher than it is. I mean, it's 48 and then puncture is 40, but it's going to weight viral even higher. And so you're going to get less puncture procs. And so you're going to be getting less of those crit chance uh, buffs. 
So I, I think at the end of the day, they'll probably both be very similar. If you went with the two 6060s or if you went with the one Toxic 6060 with Prime Cryo, um, there's probably there's pros and cons about both setups. So choose whatever you like uh, out of those two. I'm personally going to go with the two 6060s here. Um, but, you know, again, the one with uh, Prime Cryo is probably just as good. Questionably better. Okay, in the Exilus slot, there is not great option. So let me skip ahead real quick to the arcane. Primary deadhead is going to give us negative weapon recoil, okay? So that's all I'm going to talk about for now. So this this gives us negative weapon recoil. With just primary deadhead, we almost get rid of all the recoil. There is a little bit of remnants of, of recoil left on the weapon. If you want to completely remove the recoil, you would use stabilizer. The other really good option for this spot is Vigilante Supplies. So Vigilante Supplies has a 5% chance to enhance critical hits from your primary weapons. So that means one out of 20 shots, it's going to upgrade. If it's a, if it's a yellow, it'll upgrade it to an orange, orange, upgrade to a red, yada, yada, yada. And it also helps you with uh, um, your ammo as well. It gives you a little bit, little bit of uh, ammo back when you pick up drops. This weapon, um, when I was doing testing, it didn't seem like it was going to have ammo issues. Uh, but if you find that you are having ammo issues, then just switch to Vigilante Supplies over Stabilizer. Now, all that being said, you do not start with a Dash Polarity here, unfortunately. You start with a, uh, a Matarai Polarity. And for Matarai Exilus mods, there's basically nothing that's good in this slot. The, the only one I, I may think of using was Agile Aim, which lets you move quicker when you're aiming. Um, but at that point, I would probably just not even use an Exilus and just save the capacity spot space. So if you really want to min-max this, put a Dash and put either Vigilante Supplies or Stabilizer if you want to completely remove Recoil. If you don't want to min-max this and you don't really care too much about the Exilus, just either don't use anything or you can use Agile Aim. It will make you move a little bit, uh, you know, better while you're aiming in, which you are going to be aiming in with this weapon because it's a headshot weapon. All right. In the Arcane slot, we're going to be going for Primary Deadhead. Primary Deadhead is a 360% flat damage increase, a plus 30% to headshot multiplier. We're going to be going for headshot, so that makes sense. And it reduces our weapon recoil. All right. I think that's pretty much everything about the AX-52 there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to show this off in some Steel Path gameplay. I'm going to be doing this, because I don't mix it with any externals, I do this on a big, dumb Anaros with no Archon Shards that increase weapon performance, no mods or Arcanes on the Anaros that increase weapon performance, and with a pet with no Sentinel weapon and no mods on the pet that increases weapon performance. That way the viewers can make their own uh, uh, intelligent like assumptions about what would happen if you add external things to this. Hey, let me go on solo, make sure we're on Steel Path, and we'll do what our, we normally do on our videos, which is a 10-minute mod. And we'll show this guy off. The art of combat must be practiced to truly master the canvas of war. They have just shut down all systems. I'm sending life support capsules your way. See, as soon as we start getting some uh, scope stacks up, we should be in, in a lot of reds. It won't be full reds. It'll be a little bit of oranges and reds. I think even at five. Yeah, we're at five uh, scope stacks right now. and We're still seeing oranges. Yeah, so it's an orange and red crit build. And with Prime Shred, it's going to let us punch through targets as well. So we're not just hitting the target in front of us. We're actually hitting all the targets behind them as well. Well, not all of them. Punch through is limited to... Uh... It's not infinite punch through. You know, you do have a, a limited range on it. It's a pretty cool weapon. It reminds me a lot of the uh, the Gatva when we got... I think that was last Tenokan we got the Gatva. I believe the Gatva was also very puncture uh, heavy. I think the Gatva actually had had something in its unique traits about puncture, though. Where this one doesn't. This one just adds uh, crit to your, your end value.
Now, best ribbon stats for this weapon are going to be uh, crit damage, crit chance, and multi-shot. Valuing crit damage more than any other. You'll value crit damage the most. Then probably... Multi-shot? I don't know. Multi-shot and crit chance are probably about the same. Uh, but you definitely value crit damage the most. So we'll see in 10 minutes what this guy can get up to and see how he does against the Acolyte. Um, assault rifles like this usually are pretty average against the Acolyte. They're usually not super good. They're, they're not terrible, but they're usually not super good. Now, I did not test this against the Acolyte yet. Uh, this is very early from when the, the weapon came out. I just wanted to get this video out there. Um, when we did our large element testing a few weeks ago, we found that on low alpha damage weapons, which th that's what this is, it's a, a fast firing low alpha damage weapon, uh, viral slash is still pretty much king. Uh, they don't do super well with um, blast or gas electric. Blast and gas electric usually like a little bit more alpha damage for them to do well. And that's why we went with a viral slash build here. Just kind of makes sense. I haven't had any ammo issues yet. Um, so I don't think... I think you would pick Vigilante Supplies more for the enhanced crits than for the actual ammo. Now, it's still a really good pick, and I think if you had another Vigilante mod somewhere in your build that was enhancing it to 10%, I think it would definitely be a pick over Stabilizer. Uh, but at 5%, eh, you know, I, I do like the utility of Stabilizer more than Vigilante Supplies. But like I said, if you if you had a way to on your build to, to have another Vigilante um, mod to, to boost it up to 10% or even more, I think then it, it becomes an obvious pick over Stabilizer Vigilante Supplies. See, we're, we're having a very easy time staying at max scope stacks. Um, another thing, I mean, I know it's a login reward, so this is going to be more for, like, mid-game-ish players. But when you do get um, Prime Shred, Prime Shred is also going to help you get headshots and maintain max galvanized scope stacks. Because you're going to just, through pure attrition of shooting through targets... Uh, you will get headshots from dudes like behind the target you're shooting at. So even if you're not great at getting headshots, uh, Prime Shred kind of helps you out there a little bit. It helps you out a little bit. All right, we're getting our first Acolyte here. We're going to see how this does. I'm, I'm going to guess it's going to be very average. I don't think it's going to be anything special against the Acolyte. We have Angst, which is the, the saddest of all the Acolytes. He's a sad little guy, but we're going to take him out. You can see the damage. You know, it's it's respectable, but it's not amazing. It's not bad though either. You know, it's not it's not bad damage. It just feels like your everyday average assault rifle against the uh, acolyte. Not really much different than like the Kuva Carrick or the Kuva Hind or anything. Oh, we got Vor up. I 
I'm of course not going to use any ability. So you know, you see, I have Eclipse on my bar there, but I'm not using it. I I haven't pressed it at all. Uh, sometimes I'll use my three because my three only gives me armor and status immunity, but I don't think I'm going to press that here either. I'm just going to let myself get staggered once in a while. I don't care. We'll see at the end at, at 10 minutes what our kill count is. I always do 10 minute runs and then... Um, after a few months, when I have enough enough weapons that I've done uh, this with, I'll do a tier list. And it'll be... Uh, I mean, of course, every tier list is a little bit subjective, but it's a little bit more objective because I add the kill counts to all these weapons on my tier list. And I, I tier them based on their kill counts. So because this weapon is pretty new, not all the information is out there yet on it. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is the top build for it. But let's say information comes out later on where, you know, hey, maybe when you're not aiming in and you crouch, all of a sudden fireballs come shooting out of your butt. If that happens, then maybe the build will change. But if no weird information comes out like that, uh, this will be the top build. Now, the only thing to really consider and to maybe argue over is Primed Cryo Rounds over Rhyme Rounds. Primed Cryo over Rhymed Rounds is a good argument. You can make arguments for both sides there. Or Stabilizer over uh, Vigilante Splice, I guess, too. All right, we got about a minute left. Let's we'll see what this bad boy gets to here. Try to get its kill, kill numbers up so we can be higher in the tier list. I don't want this to be at, like, stug level. I don't think it's going to be because it's, it's pretty good. I'm enjoying this guy here. I love the fire rate on it. I, I know I have Prime Shred, so that affects the fire rate. But with Prime Shred, I really like the fire rate. I don't feel like it blows through its ammo super fast. But it shoots fast enough to uh, to kill targets quickly. But it's not shooting so fast where I'm wasting ammo either. I'm not, like, overkilling targets. I mean, of course, Vile Acceleration is going to be a little bit quicker than this. Um, and you're not going to get that punch through, but it is going to be quicker. Punch is cool because you can actually shoot through the uh, doors. Let me see here. There we go. <laughs> So you get a little bit of a novel effect of shooting through doors with uh, with um, uh, punch through. All right, got ten seconds. Come on, let's get some kills. Let's get some kills, and we'll see what its ten minute numbers are. Five more seconds. It's like one more magazine. There we go. Okay. Where is the traction okay so we're at 680 kills it's pretty good 680 kills in 10 minutes head up here let me see all right no one died to slash so it's still 680 all right so good even number i like it i like the even numbers 680 kills in 10 minutes pretty decent it's got a really nice weapon it looks really cool i mean it's an ak Looks uh, really cool and, and really kind of weird for Warframe that's more of like a sci-fi ninja game to have a uh, uh, rusty old wooden, part wooden AK-47 in the game. There's the, uh, the AX-52. I hope you guys liked the video. If you liked it, consider giving it a like. If you haven't subbed yet, consider subbing or tell me what I can do to earn your sub. And thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.